he o ko e na kanaka e aloha nei ka ola loha wai a me na mele wai i he o kana loha ko ke kila wea e hali hali aku ai a o ko a pau my name is Kekua Harman and I am an associate professor at Kahaka Ula o Ke Elikolani and a representative of UH Hilo for Hawaii Papa o Keao. It brings me great pleasure today to allow now introduce this guest who really needs no introduction. His voice and his contributions to Hawaiian language as a composer of Hawaiian songs, a Hawaiian language scholar and teacher, and host of the program Kaleo Hawaii on KCCN that spoke with our mana leo or native speakers from the late 60s on are just a few reasons we are so honored to have him join us today. He's a kumu to me, although he has had many students throughout the years. He sometimes doesn't remember me enrolling in a few of his courses. <laughs> Anyhow, nui ko umahalo, anui ko aloha, no kahi Larry kawanoe linti kimura. Today he will share with us his ukana aloha that he has carried with him through the years. Ke kani a ke mauli Hawaii ho, a twist in traditional Hawaiian music as a new type of Hawaiian music that emerged in the late 1960s. As you nanea in listening to Larry's stories, feel free to type a question in the question box and we will try to have him answer them at the end of the presentation. Aloha. Hi, aloha kako, mahalo ke yahui ana, i ke ia papahana, no ke ia mea e hali i ana, i do no ka moku o kilauea o ia kau i lohe ai, yeah. Mana o lana au o ke ia ukana ho i he mea, uh, he mea, e uh, hau ori ai ka po e ke loa ahu. No laila, uh, I guess the topic that I've gotten today is about um, what I'm calling the sound of the Hawaiian Renaissance because of my involvement through Hawaiian language with uh, Peter Moon and the Sunday Mano at the very early start of this uh, uh, involvement, my involvement with uh, composing or being involved as a Hawaiian language coach with their Hawaiian record recordings. And the first one was with Meet Palani Vaughn and the Sunday Mano, and that was back in 1968. But uh, of course, the record was uh, was being rehearsed and, and practiced in 1967. So actually, I met Palani, kind of met Palani in 67 because I uh, Palani Vaughn was a uh, Kamehameha uh, student in the Kamehameha School for Boys, where I was, and he's about maybe three, four years older than me. But I was in a anthropology class at the UH Manoa after finishing two years here at the University of Hawaii Hilo College. And then you continue on in those days to get your degree at Manoa. And as I was sitting in the class and uh, sitting next to me was uh, Polani's girlfriend. And she knew I was involved with Hawaiian language. So she asked if I knew some old Hawaiian songs that had not been recorded because her boyfriend uh, wanted to do an album of Hawaiian songs because he found that Hawaiian songs uh, uh, fit his baritone voice, his style of singing, especially some of the more uh, those that are composed during the, uh, the monarchy days. So I said I had a few, so that's how I got introduced to um, Alani or Frank Vaughn. And um, then that started from there where he wanted me to be sure that I was, uh, I mean, he was pronouncing the words correctly and he wanted to know the meaning of the song. And that got me to, he wanted me to be at the studio when he was recording all of this. So anyway, when I uh, got to the studio, of course, there were the musicians and the musicians were Peter Moon, Sarah Bainui, Martin Bainui, Blah Bainui, and uh, Baby Kalima. I, I didn't get his real name, but his nickname is Baby Kalima. <laughs> and um, Peter had uh, assembled this uh, group of young male musicians. Happened that three of them were brothers, of course, and they were surfers. They were friends from surfing. And uh, my understanding is that's how Peter got more involved with the so-called Hawaiian sound because they'd go over to the Pahinui's and meet up with the father and then they'd have jam sessions and all of that. But... 
But of course, Peter had his own kind of creativity involved with um, what we would call the new style, I guess, or the new twist to Hawaiian music. And I think this is what added to, at that time in the 67, 68, this kind of a sound that was evolving, coming up, because Peter and them had never, of course, cut an album before. In other words, when you have time to prepare, to prepare for a record or a song that you're going to record in the studio, then you have enough time to change it and rephrase it and rearrange it and do all kinds of things, with, things to it. So by the time you record it, you hopefully are satisfied with it. Okay? And that's, uh, it's a creative process in that way. And uh, we were all in our 20s, I guess. And uh, so the first album from Hula Records with Mr. Don McDermott, Sr. Uh, Mr. McDermott was very much involved with recording Genoa Keave, the, Bill from, the boy from Love Boy, Hoi, Bill Kaiva. Uh, and, uh, you know, eventually the uh, Sons of Hawaii, that was Eddie Kamai and and Gabby Fahino and all of that. But here was this new gang of musicians, young male and uh, musicians, and with this new sound to it. As I'm saying, I'm crediting a lot of that to Peter. Of course, with, you know, the Pahinui boys, of course, they were also very talented. So my role was just because I knew Hawaiian language. Then Peter begin to, began to notice that of course, Hawaiian music, uh, with Hawaiian music, it's important that the lyrics be in Hawaiian. And he appreciated the meaning of it. He was learning from the, uh, that experience and that it should be pronounced correctly and all of that. Anyway, then uh, when Palani got, um, he was in the National Guard, so he got kind of activated and needed to get busy with that because the Vietnam War was still on. And um, then uh, he had to lay off of music for a while. And therefore, uh, Peter Moon and his gang of musicians uh, were interested in doing their own album. And that was the 1969 uh, album that was called Hawaiian Time. Me no, it wasn't Mi Palanibana, the Sunday Manano was the first in 68, then 69, the Hawaiian Time album. And the name Sunday Manano came about because the rehearsals were held in either Peter's, Peter Moon's house, where he lived in Manoa, and also Palanibana's house, he also lived in Manoa. So one of these practice sessions was on a weekend on a Sunday. And Peter and I were thumbing through, thumbing through some songbook. I don't know if it was Johnny Noble or one of those songbooks. And we came across the song, Sunny Manoa. It's a Hawaiian song, Hawaiian lyrics. And he saw the name Sunny Manoa. And he said, oh, that would be great for a name because we're here today on Sunday in Manoa. And so we'll say, Sunday Manoa, and that's how the name of the group was named. So I never composed a song before I met up with Peter Moon. And when he did his first album, The Hawaiian Time, he asked me if I could compose lyrics to a tune that he had made. So here I go. Uh, I said, okay, I'll try. And um, I remember we were on our way to Waimanalo to do a practice session at uh, Gabby Pahinui's place in Waimanalo. So as we were driving to Waimanalo, he had made this cassette and he's playing it. And he said, here's a tune. And I'm listening to it. And he said, oh, if you could make the lyrics, then by the time we get to Waimanalo, maybe we can practice it. So anyway, that's how this, uh, when I heard the melody, I said, oh, 
uh, I'm thinking about a beach place, you know, and the beach is called Kapalawa. And I'm thinking about the Pana of that name. The Pana means the story about how that name became named Kapalawa. And Kapalawa means the ivory pendant tooth that fell from the neck of this chiefess Kuaiva as she was running away fleeing from the lava flow of Pele because Pele had come in the form of her, you know, her common form as an old woman and she would come and ask for the most simplest things like salt and some fish that we're catching down at the old beach area. And they said, no, no, we don't, we, this is all for the ali'i. And she said, well, what about some of the scales or what about some of the intestines or some of the, the, uh, the apia, the gills, everything is for the li. So, of course, they didn't know that was Pele. And so she came down in her wrath and she just covered all those ali. And that's how come you see the stone forms of those ali standing in the ocean today at Kapalawa. And the ivory tooth pendant is in the water in the rock form. And that's how the place is Pana'ia, we say in Hawaii, Pana'ia Kona Inoa or Kapalawa. That's how the name Kapalawa is called. And therefore, He Vahi Pana Kela. Today I hear He Vahi Pana, but it's used in a very changed and different meaning. This is Vahi Pana. And therefore, that's how the lyrics go about this uh, chiefess and how Pele came and destroyed them for their being so stingy. Aia i ka poli o na hū Ke kaha ai o me ia Ka pana no ka laa o Pele Ka rahine kapu kapu o mana lō E o na ali and another song that Peter had also for that um, Hawaiian Time album, he had this tune, very uh, slow and kind of a sad tune. And so that's how come the, the lyrics came out to be, uh, I named the song Uwe Kabao in Hawaiian, of course that means the forest weeps. And that one too, he gave me the, the uh, tune on a cassette and I listened to it and composed the lyrics for it. Essentially, it's just one verse, and then Peter does his creative instrumentation on that one. Go aku kamanao ikama o kawangi wa ike hanuhe. Time in 69, I uh, had graduated with my degree, and as I said, Vietnam War, War was going and everybody was being drafted. I got drafted for two years in the U.S. Army. And uh, luckily, though, I was sent to Germany for, the, for, for my uh, service. So sure. I was there. So anyway, getting back, before I got back to Hawaii in 71, I was asked by Dr. Alfred at the University of Manoa if I was interested in teaching Hawaiian. I said, sure, I had nothing better to do. So that was the start of me uh, becoming um, a teacher of Hawaiian language beginning in 1971 at Manoa. This is my, as I said, how, you know, getting involved with Peter again. And before I got involved with Peter, because I had come back from the army in 71, 
And in my Hawaiian language class, the Hawaiian 101 class, I had Myrna Kamai, who happens to be the wife of Eddie Kamai. And she asked me uh, in, like, in the spring semester, 72, hey, Larry, can you come over to have dinner with Eddie and I at my house? And I said, oh, how nice of you. Yeah, I'd love to meet Eddie. I, of course, I had heard about Eddie. So when I went over to their place, um, Eddie had this tune and he wanted me to listen to it. And he had, and he, he played it on his ukulele. Then he recorded it on a cassette because he wanted me to do the lyrics. The Hawaii, he wanted the Hawaiian lyrics for that tune. And of course, that song became a cool morning do. I was pretty hesitant when I composed that because it had the English phrase morning do. So I just did one verse. And I shared it with him because uh, I wanted to be sure he was okay with it. And also, when I asked him, when I heard the tune, I said, well, what were you thinking about? Because uh, that would help me with creating the Hawaiian lyrics. So he said, all I could hear was, wait for me, when I, when I was playing this, you know, re uh, composing the music. I said, sure, yeah, okay. That, I sense that as well because the sound of a tune, you know, the melody has a has a mood and a meaning to it. And so I kept that and that's how come it's part of that song, the beginning. Then he said, okay, now you have to do another one because this is just one verse. So I said, okay. It's kind of hard to get back, you know, because when you spend time doing one verse, just to be sure he, he likes it, then you have a little separation. It takes some time to get back into it again. A cool morning dew Ariyamai 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 Peter, as I was saying, got together with the brothers Casimir, uh, Roland and Robert, and they were doing great things. I think they were together for about four years, uh, and I think they did about two albums, Guava Jam and uh, something like Meet, Meet the Sunday Manoa or something, I forgot now. And um, I don't know what the circumstances was when they, uh, the, when they broke up and then Peter got together with uh, <clears throat> uh, helping with another uh, group of ho young Hawaiian musicians called the Sandwich Isle Band and that was Cyril Painui, Brian Hussey, um, Stephen Hall and a steel player uh, Eddie Palama. Beautiful. And this was 1978 when Peter called me and he said, I want you to come over to my house. You know where I'm staying? I said, yeah, because I was teaching it right across the street practically at the Manoa campus because I'm, we're doing a song here and I, I want you to help out on the song. And the song was uh, uh, Sweet Memory. The song was already composed in English. He wanted me to make uh, Hawaiian lyrics for it. Well, he said to me to translate it and I told him it's hard to translate literally. So if you allow me, I'll listen to the words and, and take the essence and then put it into Hawaiian. He said, go right ahead. So there they were in, their, in the living room, a small house and the door to the kitchen. I was in the kitchen. I could hear them playing and I was sitting at the kitchen table and trying to create these lyrics, which I did, and was kind of a warm afternoon, I think it was, and there was this kitchen window and a nice breeze came in. So I said, okay, I'm gonna 
start with this breeze, but I took the breeze not from Manoa, but way over in the Waiana range, <laughs> Kayaulu. So that's the first uh, lyric to the song, Ike Kayaulu, Apahemai. Uh, and then they get into the song and then uh, right there they rehearsed the lyrics and everything and recorded it and we kept the, the English name Sweet Memory Peter them has, well, Peter and then when I say them with my class, he was my classmate in high school at Kamehameha, Ron Rocha had gotten together. I never found out how did Ron Rocha and Peter get together somehow they had, they had uh, because earlier, I don't know when in the 70s, they had started this great the Hawaiian music concert at the Andrews Amphitheater at Manoa campus and it's called Kanikapila and it went for 20 plus years this fabulous concert two nights on a Saturday and a Sunday and this is October and a Monday was a holiday and it slips my mind right now because that holiday is no longer called that name whatever it was and this is the holiday, that weekend, where they have the um, Molokai canoe race. So every, those two, e those two evenings were, the, the whole amphitheater can only take 5,000 people. But it was fabulous because at that time, by that time, and I say this is 70, in the early 70s, the, um, uh, what do you call I don't, you know, nobody called it the Hawaiian Renaissance back then. That term you didn't hear it till much later was happening because the audience, if you look into the audience, there were all different nationalities, all age groups, just interested in coming to a Hawaiian music concert. And um, I have to say that Peter was part of that. You know, and I'd like to say that Hawaiian language was a part of that as well. And, you know, this is how Peter started to do his own company called Kani Kapila. And his band was called the Peter Moon Band. And he started to do more albums in those days. It was a record, yeah. And um, I think great, great um, creativity came out from that time. And... It was easy for people to hear it and feel interested in it and brought an awareness to our indigenous place in Hawaii as the homeland for Hawaiian people and culture. And so music was one of the earliest signs of an interest in music that stimulated this thing called Renaissance. Music and the enrollment at the University of Hawaii at Manoa shot up over 500%. That much enrollment. And it was, of course, by young students who just felt that they wanted to take Hawaiian. And another was, of course, the urban sprawl that was going out into Hawaii Kai and Kalama Valley and places like that, where agriculture, people, uh, especially Hawaiian, farmers, specifically pig farming, were being evicted because they needed to use the place for uh, housing and uh, shopping centers. 
and that brought attention to that situation and there were protests about that and this is the time when uh, you know um, what is this uh, not American studies but I See, I forgot the name of this, the program at the university started at that time as well. And so this other, this, the other events, of course, such as uh, uh, the Koholawe Island and uh, Hokulea. Hokulea came about in 85 or so. Uh, Koholawe was a little earlier, I believe. But this I'm talking about started back in the early, uh, late 60s, early 70s, and continued into the 70s. So this song, Kaulana uh, Napua, has an interesting story about it because as Peter was conducting this Kani Kapila um, music uh, concert at the Andrews Amphitheater, he would invite sometimes some guest performers. And so this particular year, he had invited a group from Rarotonga. Turepu Turepu was the name of the leader of that group, I remember. Easy name to remember. And when they came over, before they came over, he had asked Peter to um, give him a Hawaiian song as he, was, he wanted to compliment, uh, show appreciation to, uh, to the Hawaii people by performing a Hawaiian song. And so Peter asked, what song shall we send? And I said, let's send them this song, uh, Kaulana Napua. And of course, I, I had supplied the translation, a little background for the song. And Kaulana Napu, of course, was composed in 1893 by uh, Ellen Prendergast for the overthrow at, right at that time as, it, as she was experiencing it. And uh, the song is a strong song, the, the meaning of the song, the lyrics. And so when this uh, Cook Island or Rarotonga group came over to practice, uh, to rehearse the song, in Hawaii here before the concert, we were at the Kiawe Gymnasium at the Kamehameha Schools. And when Peter saw this rehearsal of that song, he said, Larry, we have to do this song. I said, why? What do you mean? He says, well, you know, today when, uh, at that time, when people sing the song, they sing it very slowly and sadly and people cry about it. And I said, well, because with, for us now, we feel sad, but back then, it wasn't sad. It was very strong, calling the people the enemy, calling them greedy, calling them uh, almost robbers. I said, that is the meaning of the song. And when you share this to these people in the Cook Islands, they they understand that song that way. So when you saw the men dancing it, the way they were dancing it, it's meant to be that way. And in fact, at the state archives, there's uh, some uh, description of when the, I think it was the Royal Guard had heard the uh, song by Ellen Prendergast, they started to stand up and stomp their feet, the feet on, you know, uh, in, in uh, almost like doing a hula to the song. Because that was the actual event of the overthrow. Anyway, so when Peter came to record the song and had his, he had all worked out the arrangement and everything, he, he wanted me to say something in front of the song in Hawaiian. And so this is where I had, uh, much earlier I had written down some some thoughts in a poem or something and I told Peter I have this kind of a you know some sentences that I wrote out he said well do that do that and I said okay so he said here's the headset put it on and the mic's here and then listening to the music they had already composed and of course it was a little bit fast paced so I had to keep up with that pace and so as the words came out and then people said to me, oh, Larry, I didn't know you were chanting in Hawaii. I mean, you could chant. I said, I wasn't chanting. I was just speaking in Hawaii. <laughs> but the actual, the, the beat of the music just caused it to come out that way.
Awe na liye o ke aui hala E nā nā mai a mākou Nā pula pula o nei aue holo nei E ala mai kākou e nā kini Nā mamo ka aina aloha Aloha wale ia aina ko kākou kahua Awe ka ili ili e ka hoopuehu ia nei E pae pae hou ia ka pōhaku I paa maila ke kahua hale hou No kākou e nā pua e hoolulu ai E ala e ka i ka mahi ka palena I mua aloa a ka lei o ka lana kila Kau nana nga pua o Hawaii i Kupa a maho te o ka aina Mai ka e lele o ka loko ino Ala pala anu me ka pakaha So Peter would think that, you know, he wanted to hear a little bit more language outside of just the lyrics that were being sung. So there were other songs that I uh, did some, a little introduction to. This this one song I know is a conversation between uh, myself and Bobby Hall, who is of course part of the Peter Moon Band, and he said, "Let's do some introduction to this song." That when I heard the lyrics to this, I mean the lyrics, the music, the lyrics that came to me, I told Peter, you know, this is a song that's reminding me of a story about a UFO that me and my 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 friend had told me about. Yeah, I said, is it okay if I compose a song uh, in Hawaiian about the UFO? He said, go right ahead. And so that's how come the song UFO, UFO came about. And then, of course, this conversation between me and pa, Bobby Hall in Hawaiian, just to add a little bit more to the song. Mana o paha kako, o kako vale no, i ke ao a keo. Uana ia ka papaku, o ke kai hohoni. Pā he mea o le hoi, ka loa i ka mahina. He he a nae, ke ao o ka lewa, kahi o ka UFO. I ke ka uka a ahele, holo holo e. I ke maua, i ke kūpana e. E a hala i a mea, e lele o wā, o wā ka ne. Awe, awe, aku hi aku aku hi mai e. And, and as I was saying, I think Peter was getting to be more uh, interested in maintaining a um, connection to the language. By that time, I'm sure he understood that uh, it's important that we keep our language going. Uh, that's part of the, uh, I guess, the creative performance of, of a... Of a uh, a tune, a song, but also it helped to incorporate Hawaiian language connected to the meaning. And I was going to say that, you know, back in that, those years, not too many people could understand Hawaiian lyrics anyway, but it's important that we bring it out to the public anyway and make sure if we say something in Hawaiian, we don't have to translate it for them in English. They can find out about that later. So finally, Peter came up with a melody and he, he asked me to do the lyrics too that I was waiting for kind of because we were involved with bringing our language back to our ohana, our children and punana leo and families. And, um, you know, uh, when he played this tune for me, uh, I said, Peter, now you finally gave me a song that I'm gonna, uh, I feel good about. I mean, I, that I wanted, to, and it's going to be about how um, uh, we identify as a people with our language and culture, and that we need to keep it going. And this is where the tune uh, Kulaidi came about. And Kulaidi, of course, means our our native land, our bone land, literally Kulaidi. So meeting up at that time, we were meeting with Native uh, American Indian people. 
and they have reservations. And so they asked us, oh, do you folks have your own reservation? And I said, no, we have something like Hawaiian homes, but that's not uh, reservations and we don't have tribal government and all that. But in Hawaii, we think of our place, the whole place as our place, as Hawaii is the homeland of our people. So we don't separate just so many acres as Hawaiian and the rest not. Everything is Hawaiian. So this is the song Kulaidi. My copy Akala received a few questions in the um, question box. Uh, most of the questions though are in regards to um, where you'll be able to find this um, presentation at the, um, after this, to be able to watch it again. Um, but Larry, I have a money. I aloha ke koa, e Oh yeah, mahalo nui, mahalo nui. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to be selfish. Um, <laughs> thinking of questions that I want to ask you, um, but you know, um, I think one thing that I was thinking about throughout this presentation was, you know, we have we have many students learning Hawaiian language today, and we have very talented, um, you know, musicians, students who do both. Um, perhaps you have some advice being a part of this period of time where you saw the language and, and music, um, very talented musicians coming together and collaborating with you. Uh, what kind of advice you have for um, you know, young people aspiring to create new Hawaiian music today? Well, 
I guess I don't have too much advice about um, loving your place, <laughs> first of all. Uh, I don't know how you do that, except to really be uh, grounded in uh, being here. Our place hopefully can still uh, be as Hawaiian as it can be so that we can uh, connect to that. And of course, a part of that is uh, highlighted in this uh, program is that we use our language to express uh, what comes from our place. And as our place is the homeland for our um, language and our cultural identity, and hopefully it can grow stronger. As I said in our presentation that um, we didn't know about this uh, word Renaissance, but it's an appropriate word because back then and still today, um, you know, maybe 50 years is a drop in a bucket, uh, but in time, mm -hmm. <laughs> but still at least uh, I hope that progress has been made and I'm very encouraged. I mean, we're all happy to know that our young people are getting involved mm -hmm. with our cultural identity, with our language and participating, for example, in this uh, medium of composing new Hawaiian songs and presenting it in such a beautiful way that we can all um, be a part of it, feel that, uh, that mana'o, the meaning, mm -hmm. and see that our future can be secured as mm -hmm. progressed in becoming uh, more of what we should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was um, particularly touched with um, that last um, clip that you that you chose with, you know, seeing young people um, singing this mele kulaivi, and um, you know, for young people who who've learned, um, you know, we have a lot of young people who have gone through Kayapuni and Hawaiian medium schools, and and they bring to this um, this table perhaps <laughs> this this knowledge that they they're educated in this way and. It's, it just seems so um, natural. Just seeing that clip of the, look like maybe they're playing in the garage or whatever, I don't know where, but I, that it's just a, a natural kind of thing. And it's, um, I think that's something inspiring, yeah. Mm -hmm. And great, they were doing it in good harmony. Beautiful, yeah. Even some of their, uh, you know, uh, uh, creative, creativity incorporating, I can't identify the, the name of that. Uh, only I think it was incorporate because mm -hmm. it fit it fits so it shows that these young people understand the meaning of the words so that mm -hmm. I can fit with my kapi'ina kala kamole olu olehua I mean you know so wonderful and as, as you said this new generation is the regeneration of our culture and of our language that mm -hmm. brings us our strength for today so I think that's hello ekahi my kai and this pilina you talk about too with the with the aina, um, the images that were chosen throughout the presentation, um, you know. Oh. I, have to, I have to say mahalo, mahalo to Maria and I. Yes, Maria, I mahalo. So hard on this, and you know because you know with this Zoom nowadays it's great to have this, <laughs> but after a while it gets a little bit tired. Yeah, just watching. <laughs> so you know, try and beef it up a little bit. Mahalo nui, Maria. Yeah, my kai, my kai loa. Um, my kai, mahalo ia wa hapa ia ke kai ni nau e luana kawaa. Um, ah, luana. Kumu mai ai, ma maui a. Ah, ai pa ke noho mai la i maui. Ah, he he. No, le, ia ke kai ni nau. Pehea koma na o no na mele Hawaii i ke ia vaha. Wano e unuhi ia ke ia mana o mai i ai. So here's a, here's a question for you, Larry. Here's a question. <laughs> What are your thoughts on um, Hawaiian songs today? Well, as I said, I, I really feel great, um, happy that our young people are participating in composing in Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. And so I guess uh, my thoughts about, uh, first of all, uh, of new Hawaiian songs are uh, wonderful, especially because I know they're being, you know, participating, uh, participated in by uh, young young composers who are becoming fluent enough mm -hmm. to use Hawaiian at that level. So, and I, it's, it's incorporating what I call, you know, um, 
maybe or traditional aspects of our language and culture and of course at that level of poetry in Hawaiian lyrics beautiful so I can only say that I hope we have many many more um uh what is this hoku hano hano awards or whatever it takes to oh Grammys too of course yeah uh, you know mm -hmm. not you know we're not only going for the the, award, the awards but mm -hmm. we are doing it because we want to do it and we believe in it and we love mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. many 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 okay so we have uh Nino um what kind of advice what kind of advice would you give to composers looking to hybridize mele Hawaii with various genres? Uh, what elements should be present in order for it to be authentically Hawaiian? Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, you know, it, this is all about um, what we call that word evolution, <laughs> but it's a weird time for this word to be used because here we have this uh, I call it a gap mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. where we were in our uh, my parents my mother for example who is a Hawaiian a native Hawaiian speaker never spoke it to us the only time we heard it is when she spoke it to her parents or her mm -hmm. elders and that's how we got to hear it and so you know uh, this gap and here we want to um, take up where we left off, but where we left off is we have to do a kind of a leap to where we were and then bring it forward. Mm -hmm. And so um, all of a sudden, maybe we're into reggae now and, and then it's startling, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, mm -hmm. really? Hawaiian in reggae? Um, all, all I can say is um, it, it's an exciting journey. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's a uh, journey that will take a lot of uh, ingenuity, creativity, mm -hmm. and some know-how on how, if we're going to say, like uh, this questioner is questioning, mm -hmm. how is it going to catch to catch the ear, you know? And if this the when I go, if you go to a block party or something like that, I mean, you see masses, everybody's into it. But when mm -hmm. that evening is over, uh, what happens, yeah? Mm -hmm. So there's that kind of, uh, how would we say, instant emotion, but I would like to see something like it's a lasting, mm -hmm. it's a lasting mm -hmm. emotion. Mm -hmm. So this, these are challenges and it, uh, I don't have any magical answer to that. <laughs> uh, all I can, I can only relate to what I did as I did, uh, you know, in this presentation with that young group that I just happened, we just happened to get together under those circumstances, mm -hmm. and it seemed to have an effect, uh, and it did. And so, uh, I guess um, we can learn from that, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, we mm -hmm. can incorporate some of that. We don't have to copy, which, you know, Part of it is, uh, you know, this evolution, this continuance. Mm -hmm. So that's about all I can say about that because there's no recipe that's going to make the, yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, the, the loud, loud taste more on oil. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Nui, and I, th I think you did mention, you know, a little bit about that in that when you were talking about how they did take lines from that particular chant and then they they put it together with the song to be skilled enough to understand the language and where to use it appropriately um that's that's yeah. a skill yeah yeah my yeah. so we have a very specific question here from jerry um aloha dr larry what is your favorite melee your favorite melee yeah i've been asked that question before <laughs> <laughs> and I, my answer has always been i don't have a favorite <laughs> there's too many um different songs for different mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so uh i really it's for different occasions so it depends mm -hmm. on the situation the occasion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but i of course I appreciate a good Hawaiian language lyric Hawaiian mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Larry, as we come to the um the closing of um the presentation today, you know, himo mana opahako, mana olana moi moya, um for this period of time, yeah. No, uh, well, of course, yeah. <laughs> I think I said it all. <laughs> Which is, you know, we have to kama imua continue going forward. Uh, try to keep, uh, you know, don't take uh, one step forward and two back. We got to go two, mm -hmm. three, four, and keep progressing. And that takes uh, work. That takes um, some thought mm -hmm. and application and trying it out. And But I think, uh, I think the, uh, the revitalization of the language plays a key role. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the more we become fluent, and mm -hmm. fluent is based on standards that have been set for us. We're so fortunate that mm -hmm. we have, if not, if we don't have enough in written form, we certainly have some now available on sound, such as tape recordings or maybe video, but definitely we have tons and more than enough to look at. If we're not too mulawa, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're not, uh, we have to kind of read between the lines and get all of these kind of information from the mm -hmm. standards left for us by our people who came before us. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful uh, use of our language, not only in poetry, but in all realms, mm -hmm. in all domains. So let's mm -hmm. get into it and work on it. Okay, one one last question to, to to your thought there, and this relates to what um Kyolamong Takayanan um what he shared in the question box. But so for that type of poetry, what is your example? I when you think of the best um you know poetry that you like to um look at. I mean for Mele as examples. Examples. Uh... Well, you know, for me, I started with my grand. I I, I, told, I asked my tutu at home. We had seventy eight records, right? Mm -hmm. He had I was, my grandmother had these old seven. I play. I said tutu, I don't know what they're singing about. Can can you sit down and listen with me and tell me what they're singing? And all of a sudden, boom! You know, mm -hmm. I said, God, funny. These guys are doing. You know, they're not. You can't go by the surface uh, meaning. So our language is a very, um, uh, how do you say, just keen on poetry. That's what Hawaiian, uh, that I would say Hawaiian language is one of its major uh, qualities is that it's so well done for us to use in poetic form. And therefore sometimes it's a bit hard, yeah? So I had to ask my grandmother, what were they singing? But um, we have all of those. Uh, and, and when we look at these um, mele as what we call chants, probably were chanted not in, in our traditional sound of music. Uh, however, the words uh, are very difficult to understand because we have to put ourselves in their places. As I said, that kind of a standard that we don't live that way today, but it's a groundwork. It's the foundation that I think is strong, that we have something strong that we can build from. And that those are the kinds of, uh, I, if I can say standards or uh, examples of poetry that I, I love to read or hear. Mm -hmm. Mostly I read now and thank goodness they have, they have documented that, they have mm -hmm. written it all out for us. Oh yeah, oh, mahalo nui e Larry ki hui ana o kako, ah, mai kai, mai kai loa, mai kai aloha ia oe, ah, mahalo ia kau mau hana pau, kau mau hana pau. Mahalo ia o ko, ke ia papahana e ho mau ia no faha, e ke ia moku wahi e holo nei, ka pili aina, ma ki pa a pui, i he a kua, i he a kua i faha. Ai, holo ka moku, nulila, mahalo nui, please join us on the 24th of February at 12 p.m. as we celebrate Hawaiian Language Month with our second Pu'olo Aloha from Yui Chilo, Heukana Aloha Ka Kilauea in Kale'a Ohana Ina Mele Hawai'i. 
My Ohana will share with you some of our favorite mele and mo'olelo on our journey in Hawaiian medium education from the early 2000s to present. Aloha. Aloha nui kako. Aloha kako. Mahalo. Mahalo.